Now, your mum, there's a hotel for you. Thank you. Ah, oh, look, at last a hotel. Your father always wanted a hotel. Yeah, right, eh, mum? Poor Enzo. It was one of his lifelong ambitions to get into a hotel. Probably because he's always been chucked out of them. Jeff, <laughs> stop it. He's dead. Ah, oh, well, you wouldn't think so, the way people keep talking about him. Enzo's a genius. Enzo can eat spaghetti through his ears. <laughs> Enzo can whistle underwater. Listen, that's my old man you're talking about. Yeah, well, he gives me the pip. It's Enzo this, Enzo that. If Enzo was that red hot, how come he was born a wog? <laughs> Dad, show some respect. Forgive him, Enzo. He doesn't really mean it. Of course I do. No, he doesn't, Enzo. Forgive him. Listen, you don't really believe Enzo's up there, do you? Of course. Well, will you give him a message for me? What? Tell him to get off my bloody roof. <laughs> I won't have dead wogs cluttering up my gunnery. <laughs> All right, knock it off, Ted. You've gone too far now. What have you got against Enzo anyway? At least he wasn't an old grump like you. <laughs> Enzo was a happy person. Enzo was always laughing. Of course he was always laughing. Look how much he drank. <laughs> you didn't call him pop for nothing, did you? No. What do you mean? Oh, well, gurgle, gurgle. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, listen, if we're going to talk about my father, let's also talk about your crazy mother. How dare you have some respect for the dead? I won't hear a word against my mother. She was a very fine woman and she loved me. If she loved you, how come she used to leave you at post offices with stamps stuck on your forehead? <laughs> oh, well, that only happened once. That was a mistake. She thought she was sending a Christmas pudding to her sister in Melbourne. And she wasn't very wrong, was she? <laughs> no, no, listen, those post office blokes are not stupid. They didn't deliver me to Melbourne. No, no, they had to stop you at Albury because there wasn't enough postage on your forehead. <laughs> Look. I won't hear a word against my mother. She's a very special sort of woman. Yeah, that's what the psychiatrist said. <laughs> Do you know she spent her last years believing Dad had turned into a duck? A duck! <laughs> she didn't. Oh, oh, well, what was it then? You must know, it was a goose. <laughs> <laughs> she was dead right, a goose. Ted Bullpit, human goose! Oh, well, stop it, stop it, stop it! Stop come it, Ted I won't no, be no, goosed no. in my own house. You love it, come on, just listen. Get away goose. from there, great, call him off. Oh, uh, 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 get away, get those hands goosey, out for me. Goosey, goosey, goosey. Listen, listen, I'll have you know I was in the army. Did they teach you the goose step? <laughs> Watch it, mate. These hands are lethal weapons. Only in the kitchen. I was a train killer. I might have been just an ordinary cook, but I wiped out battalions. Yeah, and they were all Australians. <laughs> no, they weren't. They were the enemy. Uh, I, I, I had the Japs on the run. Only after they'd eaten your food. <laughs> very funny, very droll. But I'm not just anybody. I invented jungle green pikelets. Oh, Dad, don't be mad. Everyone knows your crumpets went mouldy. They didn't. I made them green so that the Japs couldn't bomb them. <laughs> Why would the Imperial Japanese Air Force want to bomb a pikelet in New Guinea? Very cunning, you basic Jap. You see, they wanted to cut off our supplies and bring us to our knees. But an army runs on its pikelets. Well, you're certainly, didn't they line their boots with them? <laughs> Look. My pikelets won the war. Oh, oh, stop it, Dad. You're being really mad now. Well, he started it. I didn't. You, you, yes, you did. Didn't. Yes, yes, you didn't. Did. 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 Stop it! <laughs> Look, for once, just once, can't we spend a quiet night playing Monopoly without you two bickering? Well, I don't bicker. I certainly don't bicker. You bloody do. I bloody, bloody don't. Do. Do. No, Ted! I am getting angry, and you know what will happen. Uh-oh. <laughs> now see what you've done. I'm sorry, Rosa. I didn't mean to do it. It's just he provoked me, this little wog bloke. And what? No, 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 he's not a wog. He's a very nice little bloke. Oh, 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 I love the little bar. Yeah, bar, 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 black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. Doe a deer. Female deer. Ray, a drop of gold. Dad, what are you doing? I don't know. Stop picking on me. Why does everybody treat me like I'm a dead rat? Because you are a... Bruno Ted! Now, are we going to play this bloody awful game or...? Ooh. Oh! Oh, Greta, did you hear that? You said bloody awful. I oh, know, Greta just popped out. Does this mean I've turned into an Australian? <laughs> just a minute. What comes out of England? Whinging poms. Congratulations, you're one of us. <laughs> Listen, are we going to play this game or not? Oh, you're ready now, are you? Yeah. We finished calling each other names and flinging mud pies at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about you, Daddy dear? You're ready too? 
Very funny, Miss Smarty Emu bum. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Just roll the dice. I want to get out of here by the weekend. Right, 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 I will. Hang on, hang on, just a minute. Who owes me rent? Nobody. Why not? You don't own any property. <laughs> That'd be right. Everybody owns heaps of everything and I own nothing. Not a bloody sausage. Sweet F.A. Zero. Oh, roll on, guys. Dice. All right, all right. Stop picking me. It treats me like a dead rat. It's time to pick on Ted again. That's all it is. Just roll on, dice. All right, all right. Hey, where am I? There, you just landed on go. Oh, uh, 200 bucks. All right. Right, right, right. right. Roll the dice. You. Right. <laughs> Four. One, two, three, four. Income tax collect 200. <laughs> it's a double. I'll get another go. Roll the dice. Three. One, two, three. Chance. Go back three spaces. <laughs> One, two, three. Income tax. 200 bucks. No. It's not fair. <laughs> Sorry, Ted, old copper. That's the way it goes. My turn now. Give me the dice. No. Dad. No, I refuse. I'm going to have another go. You can't. It's against the rules. Yeah, well, this is my house and I'm making up the new rules. <laughs> and the new rule is, if I don't own anything, I get another go. All right, all right, all right. One more go. Right, right, right. right. Three. One, two, three. <laughs> Chance. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Pickle me. Grandmother, a bloke can't win. <laughs> Come on, Ted, it's your go. Oh, come on, Dad, if you don't have your go, none of us can keep going. Please, Ted, I'll give you a piece of fruitcake. Don't want a piece of fruitcake. What? You can take a piece of fruitcake and shut. What? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Oh, come on, Dad, we'll let you get out of jail for nothing. We will not. We will. Oh, that's not fair. That's favouritism. No, it isn't. We've just got to get Dad out of jail so we can finish the game. That's not fair. I'm going home. Oh, sit down, Bruno. Oh. Come on, Dad. You can get out of jail for nothing. Don't want to get out of jail for nothing. I'm happy in jail. At least a bloke knows where he is in jail. <laughs> Among his friends, the other dead rats. Oh, God, it's pathetic. You go and talk to him, Greedy. He'll listen to you. Oh. Go on, Greg. Oh, right. Come on, Daddy dear. We all love you and we want you to play Monopoly with us. You've got a funny way of showing it. Oh, but we do, Daddy dear. Rosa loves you and I love you. And Bruno's waiting. <laughs> oh, come on. For your little girl. For your little Gree Gree, who loves her dada lamb lamb. Well, no cheating. And I get out of jail for nothing. Anything you like. And he's not allowed to stare at me with his wog eyes. Oh, no. But I can stare at him as if I like. Oh, look, just roll the dice. Right, right, right. Dada lamb lamb. <laughs> not a word of the blokes oh. in the pub. Now, on second thoughts, I'm not going to play at all, so cook to all of you. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, sweet, Dad, sit, stay, and roll the dice. Oh, Right. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Ah, oh, free parking. Ho, oh, ho, something for nothing at last. All oh, my luck's changed. I'm going to win. Oh, just throw them again. Right, right. One, two, three, four, five. Go to jail! Triple, quadruple, <laughs> pop with knobs on! <laughs> oh, look, playing against me as usual. Oh, oh, you've done it now, Ted. You've really done it this time. You've ruined the whole game and you've won. How was I win? Because you got me angry. I always promise that I'm not going to get angry, I'm not going to lose my temper, and I'm not going to swear. But then you bring out that bloody Monopoly set and I lose. Ah, that's typical you little greasy blokes. You crack under pressure. <laughs> not, not like us big white blokes. Huh, I see cool under fire. I mean, look at James Bond. He's a big white bloke. And the head of Spectre's a little wild. What? Huh, and guess who always wins? Hint, hint. Right, oh, come on, Ted. I'm going to punch you. Oh, come oh on. I'll tell on you. Rosa, Rosa, he's going to punch me. He's going to punch Bruno, me. No, no, Ted, now stop it. You're both acting like two fiats caught in a tent. <laughs> now sit down. Bruno, sit down. I don't want to sit down. Sit! Oh, all right. <laughs> You too, Dad. I wasn't doing anything. Sit down! <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, we'll all have a nice cup of tea. Won't that be terrific? <laughs> yeah, marvellous.
Christmas. That would be very nice, Rosa. Wouldn't it, boys? Yeah, suppose so. Well, I'll make the tea greeter and you'll stay here and be no man's land. Oh. Well, who's got anything new to talk about, Dad? Bruno? Well, I've got some news. We all thought that the goldfish at work was pregnant, but it's not, it's dead. <laughs> I'm going to cut you out of my will. Uh, poor little thing. But its little friend, the ceramic diver, looks all right. You haven't got a will. Oh, I bloody have. I was going to leave you some very valuable stuff, but I'm not going to now. Oh, you haven't got any valuable stuff. Oh, I bloody have. I've got a real will, like they, like the solicitor reads in the movies, you know, where they gather around and he reads it out to the family and, 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 and the pretty woman gets everything and the poor wife just gets left the cat. Dad, what are you talking about? No, I've got a real will. Look, I'll prove it to you. Look. Look, you tore up your will when I married Bruno. Oh, no, no. This is a real one. Ha <laughs> ha. Jumped up solicitor. And that little poof to jumped up solicitor to try to charge me a hundred bucks for typing it out. You paid a hundred bucks for no, a will? I didn't say I paid a hundred bucks. He tried to charge me a hundred bucks, but I'll die before he gets it. What do you mean? <laughs> I left it to him in me will. <laughs> Ah, Rosa, Rosa, come here and sit down. Come on, come and sit. You may sit. You may sit in my chair. Oh, Ted, are you sure? Yeah, just this once now. Ooh. Now, you can all shut up and hear something to your great benefit. What is it, Greg? Right. It's Dad's will. Yeah. Oh, stand by, Enzo. Ted's on his way. Quiet, woman. I, Edward Melba Bullpit, being of sound mind, <laughs> not a word out of you, Wog. Do hereby, etc., 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 bequeath the following stuff to the following freeloaders. <laughs> to my very dear friend and companion, Rosa Bertolucci. It's me. Quiet woman, I'm talking. To her, I leave my ultra modern kitchen, the dogs, and my Sid Chrome toolkit. Oh, thank you, Dave. Happy? Yes. Right, you can go and pour the tea now. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Right. Uh, to my darling daughter, Greta, I leave half the house and the compost tumbler. Why only half the house? Well, the other half isn't paid for yet. Oh, thanks, Dad. Just what I wanted, a huge debt. Hey, what about me? Oh, yeah, yeah. To this little swarthy bloke who creeps around under the lion, oh, alias the wog. <laughs> what do I get? Yeah, well, to the wog I leave my underwear. <laughs> what? Oh, well, remember, it's the thought that counts. Is that it? That's all I get, your grotty old underwear. It's not grotty. My underwear was going to star in a Rinso commercial. Yeah, <laughs> sure, Ted. What's this? I don't know. What is it? Well, this is an old stamp album. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. no. I'm going to chuck it out. Well, don't chuck it out. I'll have it. You will not. It's worthless. Well, give us it, then. No, no, no. It's the principle of the thing. What principle? It's all very simple. It's mine, and you can't have it. Why not? <laughs> because I don't like you. Don't chuck it out. You don't know what's in there. Listen, I've made up my mind, and last and finally, I am chucking it out. All right, all right, hang on. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. F done, done. And, and, and cash, no monopoly money. Bruno, that's $50 you're throwing okay. away. <laughs> oh, okay, there you done. Go. 50 bucks for that junk. Listen, give us 100 bucks and you take my garbage home, if you like. <laughs> no wonder you blokes lost the war. Right, now, I own everything in it, right? Yeah. Good, just checking. Hang on, hang on. Uh, uh, what's in it? Nothing. Just some old stamps and these. Pickle me grandmother, me war medals. Give them, give them, give them, give them. Come on, Ted. Rise and shine. Time to get up. Uh... Come on, upsy down. Ted Breck, he's getting cold. Oh, can't a bloke sleep in for five minutes on a Saturday morning? It's 11.30, Ted. Oh. Morning, Rosa. Hello, Craig. You were home late last night. Not through lack of trying. Oh. Well, now, what would you like for breakfast? Chop, sausages, eggs, bacon? Yes, please. But what about your father? He's on a diet. 
Since when? Since I'm eating his breakfast. <laughs> oh, Craig. Oh, you know, you missed out on a great night last night. Yeah, I know. Still, a friend wasn't that bad. Now, you do the right thing. I try to, Rosa, but they keep knocking me back. Oh, Craig, you are a naughty boy. If only I could be. <laughs> anyway, what was the big event last night? Oh, your father changed his will. You've been playing Monopoly again. <laughs> Did Bruno punch him? Almost. And I suppose he finished the night by chucking the Monopoly into the incinerator? No, Craig, don't you remember? The fire brigade confiscated the incinerator <laughs> after that unfortunate incident with the next door rooster. Oh. He chopped it up. No, Craig. The axe is still stuck in the telegraph pole. <coughs> After that unfortunate incident with the paper boy. Well, what happened? Well, let me put it this way, Craig. The blender isn't working anymore. All right, all right. I'm here. What's for breakfast? Good morning, Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's for breakfast? Uh, toast. Hey, what about what he's got? Well, he got it first. <laughs> now, come. I got here first. That'd be right. A man's sausages aren't his castle anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Have some toast. No, no, not anything toast. Toast gives you cancer. Oh, rubbish! <laughs> no, it's true. What about old Clary down the road? He was eating toast when he went. The roof fell on him. <laughs> exactly. If he hadn't been eating toast, he wouldn't have been in the room when the Cessna hit his house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Have it your way. Eating toast makes planes fall out of the sky. Would you like some baked beans, Ted? Ah, uh, no thanks. I want a quiet weekend. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's my paper? Well, what was the bloke got to do to get his paper? In front of you, Ted. Oh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, look, can't your son take his junk home? Sorry, Ted. Hey, what is it? Oh, it's your father's old stamp album. He sold it to Bruno for $50. <laughs> oh, Dad, there could be some priceless stuff in here. No, it's rubbish. The wog doesn't know that. Oh, pardon, pardon, pardon the French, Rosa. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Dad, but I know for a fact that this one here is worth at least 50 bucks. Are you sure? Oh, I think so. I'll go and check in the catalogue. Pickle me, grandmother. <laughs> I think I diddled myself, Rosa. Oh, Ted, you'll find some clean undies in the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> woman. I haven't done that for ages. <laughs> What's it say, Craig? Yeah, I was right. 75 bucks. 75 bucks? Shh, shh, shh. Not a word to Rosa. She and the wog are thick as thieves. <laughs> <laughs> but he's her son. Yeah, but you can't trust any of them. Here, look, I'll just take one out and you'll never know the difference. Oh, Dad, that's stealing. No, it's not. He's the wog. Well, uh, now, what is it? The green kangaroo one penny or the upside down swan? The green kangaroo. Hang on. What did you say about an upside down swan? Oh, yeah, this one here. You have a good look at it, Dad. Yeah. It's blue black. Uh, yeah. And the swan is upside down. Yeah. And the wording is Western Postage Australia fourpence. Yeah. I think you better fasten your safety belt, Dad. Why? That stamp is worth $45,000. Pickle me grandmother, I'm rich. Huh? No, Ted, pickle your grandmother. Bruno's rich. <laughs> Hello? Anyone home? Mum? Ted? Is that you, Brune, mate? Yeah, what? Ha, <laughs> oh, Brune, mate. <laughs> you all right, Ted? <laughs> My son. Son? <laughs> the best little walk, uh, mate, uh, <laughs> a man could welcome into his family. <laughs> There's something heavy falling on your head, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> You're a right, Brune. You know, if I had another daughter, I'd want you to marry her too. <laughs> the dog's worming pills. You thought they were vitamins again. <laughs> Would you like a beer, little buddy? Oh, what a ripper little migrant. Ah, uh, mate. <laughs> no, I've got to go. <laughs> no, no charge. No, no, no. No money on the fridge. No, thanks, Ted. <laughs> Just came to get the stamp album. Ooh. The, uh, the, the, the stamp album? Why? It's mine. Oh. I'm going to take it over to a mate who said he'd value it for me. Never trust a mate. I mean, I'm a mate, and do you trust me? No. Exactly. I mean, never <laughs> trust a mate. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 50 bucks back, and I'll keep the album. No, thanks, Ted. It's not worth anything, you know. I mean, no. So you won't take 50 bucks for it? No. How about a thousand? That's a deal. Oh, you, you ripper. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, you see that stamp there, uh, the swan? Uh, 45,000 bucks that's worth. I'm rich, you're poor, I'm the king of the castle. <laughs> Ted.
To date, there have only been 14 examples of this rarest of Australian stamps discovered. Well, I must be the 15th. Oh, 14 was always my lucky number. What? Well, you know what I mean. Go on, Craig. The placing of the swan upside down within the frame or border was caused by a printer's error. Must have been done at the staff Christmas party. <laughs> 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 the corrected version of this stamp is quite common and in mint condition has recently realised $150. I don't understand, Craig. Well, it's quite simple, Rosie, you see. If the writing's the right way up, then the swan should be upside down. But it's not. Hey. Oh, Dad. Oh, this is the ordinary stamp. What? You oh, stuck it in the album upside down. <laughs> You mean... It's only worth 150 bucks. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Tell you what I'll do, Ted. What, Brune, mate? I'll buy you a new Monopoly set. <laughs> Pickle me, grandmother, a bloke can't win. 